Good morning. Welcome to the Christmas Eve radio broadcast of our worship service from the Sanctuary of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, located at 357 Division Street in Elgin, Illinois. Our theme this evening is This Night We Are Those Who Dream. Bruce Cook will be your host for the hour. We welcome you to our service. Leading the service this morning, this evening, is Pastor Pat Geisman. The organist is Matt Wall, the deaconess Andrea Delaney, special musicians today, Bob Balsam. We begin our Christmas Eve worship with a call to worship. This year we dreamed of world peace. We dreamed of deep breaths and restful sleep. We dreamed of love that lasts and suffering that passes. We dreamed of doors open wide and a cure to disease. We dreamed because to dream is to believe. For to dream is to hope, to dream is to see. So make room in your being to dream yet again of a world without fear and a God that draws near. For it is almost Christmas. Love is almost here. May we dream to see and hope to believe. Let us worship, holy God. Amen. In the beginning, God dreamed of a beautiful world. In Egypt, the Israelites dreamed of freedom. In the wilderness, the people dreamed of safety. In Jerusalem, the people dreamed of a Messiah. In Bethlehem, the shepherds and the wise men dreamed of a new beginning. Then several years later, Jesus walked this earth and dreams came true. The sick were healed. The poor had food. The forgotten and ignored were seen. The children were welcomed. Everyone was invited to the table and the world has never been the same. So tonight, we are those who dream. 
Tonight we dream the same dreams of our ancestors before us. Tonight we dream of justice and mercy, of love and kindness, of peace and hope. Tonight we dream of a God that draws near to us out of unfailing love. May this candle be a reminder that there will be a day when every dream will be fulfilled. And until then, we will be those who dream. We continue with the prayer of confession. Ever present God, from time to time we dream radical dreams. We dream of freedom for the imprisoned, food for the hungry, and equality for all. We dream bold, radical dreams until the world tells us that these dreams are impossible. And when that happens, we are tempted to tuck our dreams into coat pockets and let them collect dust on the shelves of our hearts. Forgive us for giving up so easily. Forgive us for giving up so easily, for on this night we remember and celebrate a radical dream that you dwelled among us. Give us the courage to dust old dreams off the shelf with the confidence that you, the impossible, is possible. With you, a light always shines in the darkness. With you, even an unwed teenage couple and a band of shepherds can bring joy to the world. Thanks be to God for a dream like that. Amen. Once in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed, where a mother laid her baby. Where he 
standing by we shall see him but in heaven sat at God's right hand on high there his children gather We open our hearts in prayer. Holy God, if we listen closely, we can almost hear the angels sing. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the bleats of sheep following shepherds and the hooves of confused barn animals. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the innkeeper say, no room. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the star whisper, follow me. If we listen closely, God, we can almost hear you. So as we turn to your word, holy writer, don't let us miss a thing. The smell of the hay, the cool of the air, the way Mary cherished this wild dream in her heart. We want to hear it all. We don't want to miss a thing. So today we pray, can you help us listen closely? Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, or good evening. Um, right now is a good time to get your communion ready for later in the service. So get a cracker or a piece of bread, wine, or grape juice. Um, to get ready to celebrate the Lord's Supper. We continue with the first reading from Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you, as with joy at the harvest, as with people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the trampling warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm this evening is Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonder among the, all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols, but you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, your, you families of the peoples, ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due, the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord, all the earth. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is king. The one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. 
Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming, O Lord, for you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. The second reading is from Titus, the uh, second chapter. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Well, hello, children of all ages. Today, I thought... Trinity could help us read a book, but I just noticed something funny about Trinity. Trinity, you still have your Advent blue on, silly bear. You're supposed to have white on because it's Christmas Eve. And you notice behind you all that altar cloths are now white. So you have to keep up with the seasons. All right, you look better. Now, we'll read, There Was No Snow on Christmas Eve. There was no snow on Christmas Eve or snowflakes in a flurry dance, no pristine banks of milky white or ice pond in a shivery scene. Looks like our season of winter. There was no bitter winter wind, no need for woolen caps and gloves. So long ago in Bethlehem, instead of a storm, a night scene. There was no snow on Christmas Eve when the donkey took them through the street. 
Sweet Mary wore a flaxen robe and Joseph sandals on his feet. A stable open to the world, their quilt no more than straw. The balmy season bright with star, let shepherds dream among the sheep. There was no snow on Christmas day, instead a desert wind blew and palm fronds sang a wrestling tune to welcome the awaited birth. Wise men and women, joy and heart, came humbly through the tranquil heat. With bare feet children, all to see why angels sing above the earth. And there's a picture of Mary and baby Jesus. So I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and hope to see you again soon in person next year. For almost everyone around the world, Christmas is different this year. Family festivities, parties, dinner with friends, gatherings of all kinds, concerts, plays, caroling, and worship will be smaller, quieter, virtual, and lonelier. This year, we celebrate Christmas separated from the people and customs we have known and cherished. And yet, Christmas comes to us. A couple of weeks ago in the children's message, Deaconess Andrea told us that she bought a 2020 Christmas tree ornament. I thought that was a really good idea. Thanks for that. So I ordered one too. I have it here. It has words and short phrases that, that reflect this year. Words like hand sanitizer, driveway visits, six feet apart, contact tracing, face mask ventilator, staying home, and isolation. These words and others like it describe the reality of our narrative from the year 2020. This December is completely different than last year at my house. Last year, in addition to Christmas, we celebrated my mother's 90th birthday. We had all kinds of out-of-town company, and I can tell you, it was really fun. Food, festivities, museums, movies, restaurants, recipes, gifts, games galore. It was one gathering after another, and this year, there are none. Now, of course, this does not come as a shock to me, or really to any of us. We could see this aloneness coming, but still, the absence is upon us. This is especially hard for Americans who, according to a Gallup report, say that Christmas and Thanksgiving are two of the three happiest days of the year. Now, Deaconess, can you guess what the third happiest day, according to Gallup, is? Now, I didn't get it right, so there's no pressure here. Birthdays. Birthdays. Oh, well, you're sort of close. <laughs> oh, your birthday. Okay, we'll celebrate your birthday. <laughs> no, according to Gallup, the third happiest day for Americans in the year is the 4th of July. Now, are you surprised? That's it. But even pre-pandemic, the holidays could be hard for us. In 2015, people polled reported 61% felt stress, 36% felt sad, 26% said they were lonely, 27% of men and 17% of women confessed that they drank too much. There is indeed what we would suspect all along, hidden unhappiness. We compare ourselves to others, overestimating their perfect lives. We ruminate over the past in ways that only increases our isolation. This year will be especially trying. For some, it is a season marked by continued fear and loss due to the pandemic. 
For many families, there are painful separa separations that cap months and months of already being apart. More than usual, many people, maybe all of us, can use some holiday happiness assistance. Arthur C. Brooks is a social scientist from Harvard. He writes a bi-weekly column called How to Build a Life, where he tackles questions of meaning and happiness. A recent column is titled, Don't Isolate Yourself This Holiday Season, with a subtitle that reads, The, the Pandemic Makes It Dangerous to Gather in Person, But For the Sake of Your Well-Being, Find Connection However You Can. The first step in unwrapping happiness is to focus on the true meaning of the holidays, not the commercial version of them. In the Journal of Happiness Studies, and yes, there really is such a thing, the scholars conducted a study which found what brought happiness, two things that brought happiness to the most people according to the study, family and religion. But you probably already know that. This is what you're trying to do right now by tuning into this service. You're turning your focus into the true meaning of Christmas. So even though we are separated, we gather this Christmas Eve to hear again the old, old story of Jesus' birth in Bethlehem. Most of us have known this story our whole lives. So late in this dark December of 2020, we listen again and wonder, does the old story hold anything new? Is there meaning for us today in the miracle of a baby boy born in Bethlehem millennia ago? Even though we are only in chapter two of Luke's gospel, Mary has already been through a lot. The Annunciation from the Angel Gabriel, celebration with an older cousin Elizabeth, months of expectation and wondering, expanding and waiting, traveling to Bethlehem, getting sent to the stable for labor and delivery. I wonder, was there a midwife or only other mother animals looking on for maternal support? And now shepherds come to see her newborn with news of their own. This story, now so familiar, was certainly strange to young Mary. What to make of it all? Luke tells us that Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. In the Greek, the word treasure means to keep close, to keep safe and sound. The word ponder literally is placing together for comparison or judging the worth of. What words do we keep close? What words and experiences do we reflect on and consider worth keeping? Do we have more to hold on to than the words and phrases on my ornament? What will it feel like to read these in the years to come? I wonder. At the very bottom of my ornament, there are these words. The world pressed pause. The world pressed pause. Joe Pinsker wrote an insightful article for The Atlantic called The Year We Lost. In it, he says, for all of its eventfulness, 2020, has been for many a lost year in several senses of the word. The enormous loss of human lives here and around the world. The pandemic paused people's progress, careers, and family goals. Eight million people descended into poverty. The narratives of our lives have been disrupted indeed. No single event in American history seems to have yielded a lost year in the way 2020 has. A common narrative around the end of the pandemic is that at some point we're going to wake up 
and we will have arrived back at normal, and we can begin living again. Jason Farman, a media scholar, said, from my perspective, this is a damaging way to think about 2020 because it erases it. Rather than saying that this has been a year of tremendous learning and transition. And then he said this, waiting is not doing nothing. Waiting is not doing nothing. It is a valuable tool for understanding our hopes and an occasion to ask questions like, what am I hoping will come after this period of waiting? Will it fulfill me? Should I change anything about how I previously lived my life? Freeman calls this an inter internal audit, internal audit. I think Luke might call it pondering. Like Mary long ago, we can ponder this year. We can place it together with our memories and stories and judge their worth. What does it mean? What difference does it make? What changes will we make? What will come after this period of waiting? What is it, really, that we hope for? And what can we look forward to? Human beings need this. Without a future to look toward, we are horizonless. Not having events to anticipate leaves us rudderless. I remember December 1981 when I learned a big lesson about the importance of anticipation. After many months of planning, we had a huge family gathering to celebrate my grandmother's 80th birthday. Almost everyone came. Recall there were about 42 of us. The celebration was not a surprise. My grandmother told me how many times she looked forward to seeing everyone. Her anticipation was part of the joy. Last year, when my mother turned 90, we had a party, too, at my house. It was much smaller, but a wonderful time to be all together. The anticipation gave the days that preceded the celebration fullness and meaning. Besides that, I had a lot of work to do. Anticipation contributes to our well-being. So it seems to me that this Christmas, we can ponder our feelings and fears, consider the worth of this time, what matters and what doesn't. We can treasure and ponder and take time to think over and feel through our experiences. What can we let go of? What do we need to forgive? What can we hold on to and cherish? We can ponder Mary's pondering. When I consider what words were going through her head and what feelings were part of her heart, I put together the words of the angels, both to Mary and the shepherds. Gabriel came to Mary and said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Nine months later, an angel came to the shepherds and said, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news for all the people. And at the very end of the song, a whole choir joined in praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth among those whom he favors. As I ponder these angelic messages and put them together, I hear, do not be afraid you have found favor with God. Do not be afraid you have found favor with God. And dear people, this is worth our pondering. Luke is telling us that the, that the good news of God's favor God's desire for the well-being of all people is intended for all people. God's favor, the gift of grace for Mary, was not a one-time only celebration, but an ongoing continuation through her and the whole family of God. At the end of a difficult year that feels in some ways lost, we may long for what we knew. We may hope that we can wake up and life will be back to normal, but life never works that way. 
This year is almost over. Phew. We made it this far, but we cannot go back, only forward into the future. We can look toward the horizon with hope. Soren Kierkegaard wrote, Life can only be understood backwards, but must be lived forwards. The love that will never let us go has come into the world in the person of Jesus of Nazareth. This favor, grace, and well-being comes to everyone, even those who could barely dream they could be included. So what if, in our Christmas Eve worship time together, we pause to ponder this, do not be afraid, you are favored. Like Mary and the shepherds, Joseph and the prophets before him, we can trust that we can be part of God's dream. We can hold on to the good news and share it even now. The dream that the good news of God's favor, goodwill, and peace is for all people. If we are lost, lack confidence or courage, we can ponder. If we are stuck to stories of failure or regret, sadness or sorrow, we can ponder. If we are worried about our lives and the world, we can ponder. If we wonder about light in the darkness, we can ponder. If we are older, we may wonder, what difference has my life made? If we are younger, we may wonder, what difference will my life make? And we ponder. Mary reminds us that the treasured truth is the word became flesh and dwelled among us. We are all together favored by God. Even with the hardship of our times, we are not lost but found. We can participate in the divine dream and be part of the holy agenda. We can enter into the song even when we are alone. Hope is on the horizon. The bright morning star shines light into 2021. And it seems to me that the vaccine is the Christmas miracle the world has longed for and scientists have worked for. Now is the winter of our disconnect. Shakespeare's opening line in Richard III is familiar to everyone, but continues, made glorious summer by the son of York. Which is to say, we have reached the depth of our unhappiness and better times are ahead. In our waiting, we hope, and hope does not disappoint us. For almost everyone, Christmas is different this year, and yet Christmas comes. Merry Christmas and Amen. You're listening to Holy Trinity Lutheran Church on WRMN, 1410 on your AM radio dial in Elgin, Illinois. The hymn of the day, Jesus Came, the Heavens Adoring. Jesus came, the hands adoring, came with peace from realms on high. Jesus came to win redemption, glory came on earth to die. Alleluia, alleluia, came to deep humility. Jesus comes again in mercy, 
When our hearts are worn with care, Jesus comes again in answer to an earnest heartfelt prayer. Alleluia, alleluia, comes to save us from despair. Jesus comes to hearts rejoicing, bringing news of sins forgiven. Jesus comes with words of gladness, leading souls redeemed to heaven. Alleluia, alleluia, hope to all the Jesus comes in joy and sorrow, shares alike our hopes and fears. Jesus comes, whatever befalls us, cheers our hearts and dries our tears. Alleluia, alleluia, comforts us in failing years. We confess our faith together with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came, came down, down from heaven, heaven was, was incarnate, incarnate of the Holy Spirit, Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Joining our voices with the song of angels, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. The shepherds sing, Jesus Christ is born. Let your church throughout the world proclaim this good news over the hills and everywhere. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of a world at rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The angels sing peace on earth. 
Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child. Bring rest and reassurance to those facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers and those without homes. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting, especially Shirley, Heidi, Bonnie, Jack, Bob, the family of Betty, Doris, Sue, Joe, Brian, Nicole, Kay, Marcy, Darlene, John, and Fred. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Love sings through the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new parents and expectant parents. Comfort those who long for children, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavenly chorus sings glory to God in the highest. We give you thanks for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed. Let us join them this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of mercy, come quickly to us with grace upon grace as we lift these and all our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Gracious God, you came to us as one unknown, bringing joy and salvation to the earth. Nourish us at your banquet table, that with all who welcome your birth, we may proclaim your peace, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died, died. Christ, Christ is, is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth and his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us, bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us, awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Come Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word is revealed in a manger in simple bread and wine. Come meet Christ in this meal. People of God, this is the body of Christ given for you. Thanks be to God. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us from your very self with the body and blood of Christ. Through this mystery, send us forth to proclaim your promise to a world in need. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Jesus, Lord. 
Lord at thy birth. Receive the blessing. Almighty God, who sent the Holy Spirit to Mary, proclaim joy through the angels, sent the shepherds with good news, and let the Magi by a star bless you this day. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. hope you've enjoyed our broadcast this evening of the Christmas Eve worship service. We sincerely invite you to our next live worship service to be held on Sunday, December 27th at 9.30 a.m. The service will be broadcast on WRMN, 1410 a.m., or you can go to holytrinityelgin.com on YouTube and live stream it. All are certainly welcome. Today's radio hour was sponsored by LeVon Whipple. Today's altar flowers are sponsored by Jackie Coutina in memory of her mother's birthday today. This is Bruce Cook returning you to the Elgin Broadcasting Studios of WRMN in downtown Elgin. <laughs>